Welcome back to WWH. My name is Andrew Dreamer. Today we're going to be breaking down and analyzing some of the different subgenres of horror movies and what I'm calling the Ranking Rumble. And along with that, I'll be telling you which one is my favorite. So go ahead and let me know down in the comments which is your favorite right now. The thing about subgenres is that there really could be an infinite number of them. They can break down in so many ways. You can combine them to make a unique subgenre. But I narrowed it down to 10, which I think is a good number. And remember, this is just my opinion. We don't have to like the same things. And on that note, it's time to get this rumble started. Let's head down to the ring. Coming in at number 10 is going to be the cult subgenre. The cult subgenre of horror movies delves into the dark and disturbing world of cults, exploring the dangers of fanaticism, manipulation, and the pursuit of power. These films often center around groups or organizations that engage in ritualistic practices, worship of dark entities, and coercive control over their followers. Examples of cult films include Midsummer, The Wicker Man, and Rosemary's Baby. I just find these films to be lacking a lot of times for my taste. Sure, some of them are good when they lean more on the psychological elements as well, but when they rely solely on the existence of a cult or group, they fall short in my opinion. The examples I listed are actually some of the best examples of this subgenre being used right. But coming in at number 9 is body horror. This subgenre explores the grotesque and visceral transformation or mutilation of the human body, often exploring themes of identity, decay, and the loss of control over one's physical form. These films frequently depict graphic and unsettling imagery, pushing the boundaries of what is considered acceptable or even comprehensible. Honestly, to me, the best part of films like this are the special effects. If you don't have good special effects in a body horror film, you've basically got nothing to keep me hooked. Examples include The Fly, or The Human Centipede, or even Society. In each of these, the special effects are phenomenal and really drive home the point of the film, as well as the antagonizing pain the characters are experiencing. By the way, don't miss a single bone-crushing upload. Hit that subscribe button, unleash the horrors, and become a member of the WWH universe. We're not just wrestling with horror. We're delivering it to your screen every week. Our number eight entrant in this rumble is the zombie subgenre. Zombie movies have been a staple of the genre for decades, captivating audiences with their blend of visceral terror, social commentary, and apocalyptic dread. These films typically depict reanimated corpses or infected individuals who pose a relentless and unyielding threat to the living, often leading to intense survival scenarios and exploring themes of humanity's resilience, morality, and the breakdown of society. One of the defining characteristics of zombie films is the sense of inevitability and hopelessness that pervades the narrative. Whether it's a viral outbreak, a scientific experiment gone wrong, or supernatural phenomenon, the origin of the zombie plague varies, but the outcome is always the same. A world overrun by the undead. You have films like Night of the Living Dead or 28 Days Later that just represent a small fraction of the diverse and expansive zombie subgenre, which continues to evolve and adapt to reflect contemporary anxieties and societal concerns. From the slow-moving hordes to the fast-paced hordes, from intimate character dramas to epic apocalyptic thrillers, zombie movies offer a rich tapestry of terror and survival. Our number seven entry is the haunted house subgenre. These movies tap into our primal fear of the unknown, transforming familiar domestic spaces into arenas of terror and dread. They also typically revolve around a house or a location that is inhabited by vengeful spirits, malevolent entities, or unresolved traumas from the past. As characters explore the haunted house, they encounter supernatural phenomena, paranormal occurrences, and terrifying manifestations that threaten their sanity and safety. One of the key elements of haunted house movies is the atmosphere of suspense and unease that permeates the setting. Darkened corridors, creaking floorboards, and flickering lights, they all create a sense of foreboding, while sudden scares and eerie noises keep you anticipating that next moment. There are countless examples of haunted house movies, honestly, too many to mention, and a lot of them are just so similar, which is why I'm not the biggest fan. But when done right, it can definitely be a unique exploration of the unknown and the unexplained. 
And with that, we're just going to keep moving right along. Coming in at number six are supernatural horror movies, only slightly above the haunted house subgenre because to me there's a bit more freedom to explore here. But this subgenre encompasses a vast array of films that explore the realm of the paranormal, delving into ghosts, demons, spirits, and otherworldly entities that defy explanation and challenge our understanding of reality. These films often blend elements of folklore, mythology, and religious beliefs to create atmospheric and chilling tales of terror that linger long after the credits roll. At the heart of supernatural horror lies the concept of the unknown and the unexplained. Whether it's a haunted house, a cursed object, or demonic possession, these films tap into our deepest fears of the supernatural and the afterlife, exploiting our innate sense of vulnerability and fascination with the occult. Some of the best known examples of supernatural horror include The Exorcist and The Conjuring, two different eras with two very different lasting legacies. These films exemplify the enduring appeal of supernatural horror which continues to captivate people to this day with its potent blend of mystery suspense and supernatural terror and just like that we are halfway through our show at number five we have psychological horror films these films take a look at the darkest recesses of the human mind exploring themes of madness paranoia and the unraveling of sanity they often trade traditional scares and supernatural elements in favor of psychological tension, atmospheric dread, and mind-bending narratives that challenge our perception of reality. At the heart of psychological horror lies the exploration of the human psyche and the terror that arises from within. Whether it's a descent into madness, a battle with inner demons, or a struggle to distinguish between reality and delusion, these films tap into our deepest fears and anxieties, preying on our insecurities and vulnerabilities. They really work to just make you think. The best example I can think of for this subgenre is The Silence of the Lambs. It's a true exploration of the human mind told by a unique, intriguing, and a very scary person. This film exemplifies the power of psychological horror to unsettle and disturb audiences, offering chilling glimpses into the human psyche and the horrors that lurk within. We confront our own inner demons and grapple with the fragile nature of sanity and perception. At number four, we have found footage movies. I know I've said that I'm not the biggest fan, but as I was working on this list, as well as the last video, I realized that I actually quite like them. I'm allowed to change my mind. These movies revolutionize the horror film landscape by offering a unique and immersive storytelling approach that blurs the line between fiction and reality. These films are presented as if the events were captured by characters within the story using handheld cameras, surveillance footage, or other recording devices, creating a sense of immediacy and realism that draws you right into the heart of the terror. At the core of found footage horror lies the concept of voyeurism as audiences are invited to experience the unfolding horrors through the lens of the characters. This intimate perspective allows for a deeper immersion into the narrative, amplifying the tension and fear, making you feel like you're right there with the characters, experiencing the horrors firsthand. As I mentioned in the previous video, the best examples of found footage are The Blair Witch Project and Paranormal Activity. I mean, everybody's heard of these movies. These films expertly showcase the power of found footage to captivate and unsettle people, offering a visceral and immersive experience that blurs the boundaries between fiction and reality. By placing viewers in the midst of the terror, found footage films tap into our deepest and darkest fears, leaving a lasting impression that just keeps going after the movie ends. For our number three entrant, we have monster movies. Monster movies have been a staple of the genre since the early days of cinema, captivating audiences with their larger-than-life creatures, epic battles, and thrilling spectacle. These films typically feature monstrous creatures ranging from classic monsters like vampires, werewolves, or zombies, to more original and imaginative creations, which terrorize unsuspecting victims and wreak havoc on the world around them. At the heart of monster movies lies the primal fear of the unknown and the uncontrollable. Whether it's a giant reptilian emerging from the depths of the ocean, an ancient creature awakened from its slumber, or a genetically engineered monstrosity created by human folly, these films really explore how we view the natural world, as well as our place within it. The Universal Monster movies come to mind, and they are some of my absolute favorite movies. These films truly just exemplify the timeless appeal of monster movies, which continue to captivate audiences with their thrilling spectacle, imaginative creatures, and epic battles between man and monster. 
Whether it's a classic creature feature or a modern blockbuster, monster movies offer a thrilling escape into the world of imagination and terror. We're nearing the end of this rumble, but coming in at number two is going to be survival horror. I absolutely love a good survival horror movie, and they're some of my absolute favorites. These movies plunge you into intense and harrowing situations where characters must fight for their lives against the overwhelming odds, often in hostile environments or against terrifying adversaries. They emphasize the visceral experience of survival, evoking feelings of tension, dread, and desperation as characters struggle to stay alive in the face of unimaginable horrors. At the heart of survival horror lies the primal instinct for self-preservation and the resilience of the human spirit. Whether it's battling hordes of zombies, navigating treacherous wilderness, or confronting deranged killers, these films force us to confront our fears and seek survival in the face of adversity. Examples that come to mind, The Descent or Frozen, the Adam Green movie, not the Disney movie. Movies like these display the visceral and immersive experience of survival horror, which plunges us all into the heart of terror and challenges us to confront our deepest fears. Whether it's the relentless pursuit of a masked killer or the fight for survival against the great outdoors, survival horror movies offer a thrilling and adrenaline-fueled journey into the darkness, reminding us of the indomitable human spirit in the face of unimaginable horrors. All right, it's almost time to unveil our number one entrant in this ranking rumble, but first, we do have to take a short break. So stick around for more WWH action. If you're looking to save 20% off of your order from Redcon 1, I have a deal for you. All you have to do is type in code ANDREWDREAMER12 when you're checking out and you will immediately receive 20% off. Head over to ProWrestlingTees.com slash ANDREWDREAMER to check out some of my merchandise as well. And last but not least, head over to Patreon to consider becoming a member of the WWH universe. There are a lot of really cool perks and we would love to have you. We're back and let's head right back down to the ring to finish off this rumble. Our final entrant, the number one. My favorite subgenre of horror is, of course, the slasher. What more can I say? I'm just kidding, I can say a lot. Slashers are characterized by their relentless and visceral depiction of violence, typically featuring a masked or mysterious killer who stalks and murders multiple victims, often with graphic and creative methods. These films are known for their high body counts, tense cat and mouse chases, and inventive kill sequences that push the boundaries of gore and shock. At the core of slasher movies lies the concept of the final girl, where a lone survivor, usually female, emerges victorious after facing off against the killer in a climactic showdown. This trope has become a defining feature of the subgenre, symbolizing resilience, survival, and the triumph over good over evil. Obviously, the first movie I think of is Halloween, my favorite movie of all time. Maybe it comes down to nostalgia, but slashers are by far my favorite types of horror movies. I love the violence, the gore, the tropes. It's all fun to me, and I think that's the most important thing when you're watching a movie, to find what's fun for you. But that is going to conclude this ranking rumble. Let me know in the comments what you think and which one is your favorite. Like the video, share the video, and subscribe to the channel. We have a lot more coming your way very soon. But until then, my name is Andrew Dreamer, and this is Wrestling With Horror.